Okay, so we're gonna look at finding measures of center, uh, and that means looking for the mean, the median, and the mode of a set of data or a sample set. Um, so here's an example, find, consider the data set below and find the mean, median, and mode. Um, pretty much always we're gonna start by sorting the data, so I've done that here. Um, I like to list it vertically, up and down, it's just easier to see um, and to count down later to find the middle of the data. Um, what you wanna be careful of when you do this is that you actually have all the data values. So one way to do that is to count them. Up here, one, two, we have 15 data values. And when I list them down, I can count them again. If, if I have the right number of data values, chances are I didn't miss any or write any down incorrectly. Um, another thing I can do is <clears throat> sort of underline or tick mark them as I go through. So I have my final list and I'll go back through it and I'll say, okay, there's two, got that, there's four, got that, six, I got that, nine. I'm going down the vertical list and I'm making sure that I have each of these guys. Um, you know, some people will go through and cross them out as they go, but then it's hard to see them. So especially if you're taking a test or something, you might go through and either underline or sort of tick mark them like I am here, <clears throat> 10, you know, maybe a, maybe a, my pen's a little thick here, maybe a little bit of a less thick pen, we could use a tick mark, 12, 13, you get the idea. Where's 13, there it is. Okay, so we go through and sort the data and count the number of data elements we have. In this case, we have 15. To find the mean, it's the average of the values or <clears throat> the sum of all the values divided by the total number of values. So I went ahead and added these numbers up. Um, that, that sum was 207 and divided by the total, which was 15, to give me a mean of 13.8. Um, we can do this manually or we could use Excel. So if I wanted to just use Excel to do that, just how I added them up, I would open Excel and you could type the numbers in or if you have them typed, you could copy and paste. So if, you know, if you're using WAMAP, oftentimes you can right click, copy the set of numbers. I'm gonna paste them in column B so that in column A later I can put my headers paste them into here. Um, so again, this if I'm typing numbers into Excel, I can see here I'm on row 15, so I have 15 numbers. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two functions here. One is just an auto sum, or the summation function. I can just use this button here for sum, and if I open the little thing, I can hit sum and it'll automatically, that's the auto sum, it'll automatically fill in sort of what it thinks you want, you're trying to add. And that's B1 through B15, that is what we're trying to add. Tab, that's the 207. Maybe I'll make that bold. Maybe I'll make it bigger. There we go. So that is the sum. Maybe I'll make that square bold as well and bigger. And maybe I'll write justify that header. And I could box that whole thing in if I wanted. Just showing you some of the functions in Excel. You should have um, done some of these in the other exercises we've used in Excel. Let me highlight these two cells, put a border around them. You don't have to do this, obviously. For homework or something, you wouldn't need to do that. I'm just showing you where those things are. Um, and then the average, or the mean, again, I'm going <clears> to <throat> make it bold, 16 point. I could just take this 207 and divide by 15. So right here, I could write equals, click above it that sum divided by 15, tab, that's my 13.8. Or I could, um, which is fine, 
Or I could use equals the average function in Excel, A, B, E, R, there it is, average, first one, double click, it wants the numbers, so I can just highlight them from B15, click, and then hold, my, hold the button until I get to the top, B1 through B15, you can see it up here, or we can see it down here as well, and then tab out, 13.8, and I can box that in. Okay, going back to our notebook. So I found the mean, and now I'm looking for the median. And the median of a set of data values is the data value that's in the center. So if we have an odd number of data values, it's actually the, the single value in the center. But if I have an even number of data values, we take the mean of the two values in the center. So because there won't be one value in the center, there will be two. So in this case, we have 15 data elements, so that's odd. So the median is the value that is in the center. So I take my list of data values and this is kind of why I want it vertical. So I can just count down. Uh, you know, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth value right here would be the one I'm looking for. That's my median because it's in the middle. Yeah, let's see if get rid of that writing. Okay, and now we want to find the mode. The mode is the data value or values that occur the most frequently. In this example, it's also 14 because 14 occurs three times. Um, if another value here occurred also three times, say, you know, 18, <clears throat> then we would say it's, it's <clears throat> it has two modes or is bimodal, um, and we would list them both. This one only has one, a single mode, and it's 14. <clears throat> and just to recap, um, you know, the mean is the average or the sum of all the values divided by the total number of values. The median is the data value in the center of the data, if you have an odd number of data values. Or it's the mean of the two data values in the center, if you have an even number of data values. And the mode is the data value that occurs most frequently. And for the example that we just worked, the mean is 13.8, the median is 14, and the mode is 14. Um, the mode is always one of the data values, but both the median and the mean could be um, non-data values. Uh, and if, if that's the case, we would generally round those values to uh, one more decimal place than the original data. That's true for pretty much all of our statistics. So mean, median, our standard deviation, other things that we're going to be finding. We generally round our statistics to one more data, one more decimal place than the original data. And where we have to be careful with this is if the problem is actually telling you what to round to. So for example, in WAMAP, you'll be asked to round to a specific number of decimal places, in which case you need to round. You know, when I say in WAMAP, I mean we're using WAMAP through Canvas, so when we do our homework online, when it says to round it to two decimal places, you should go ahead and round it to two decimal places. Um, but in general, if it doesn't say, the, the rule of thumb is to round it to one more decimal place than the original data. Okay, so that's it for measures of center.